Well, hello there, and welcome back for more Advent of Code. So yesterday we implemented a solution for day 13, distress signal. But there is something about that solution that I would like to address. Um, so in this puzzle, we had to parse these kind of uh, inputs, which are like nested strings of numbers, sorry, nested lists of numbers. numbers. And for that, we used a, uh, a JSON parser from the third library. So let's see. Yeah, here in order to parse the values, we are parsing them to a JSON and then uh, like extracting these things from like converting those JSON values to our own value type, which is uh, this simple thing, an enum that can either be a number or a list. And that's it, it's pretty simple code. But um, I don't really like to, like, I didn't like to include an external library for this. Uh, part of the objectives of, um, of, like, this project for me is, well, uh, besides having fun and learning stuff. Um, well, there's actually no, <laughs> there's actually no objective about not using, um, external libraries, but yeah, it's something of, a, I don't know, decision that I want to, like, I want to learn pure Rust as much as possible. And I guess I could, like, for, for this, I, I learned something about CERD. There are a couple of crates that are very well maintained and, and popular, like the Rayx or CERD or things like this. Uh, but to be honest, I would like to keep it as much as possible um, pure Rust. So, Today I want to try to see if we can implement like an ad hoc parser for for these things. Um, sorry, let's see the input. So this is day 13. Well, this is the real input which uh, has much longer um, lists. But we can go, I think, back to... Yes, this is the sample input. Let's use this for some moments to see uh, how to parse this. Uh, well, let's give it a try to do something very bespoke and ad hoc just for this problem, but see if it would work. Um, okay, so here, first of all, uh -huh. I think one thing that we can do uh, before anything else is to rename this thing. We're calling it parse value, but the... Um, the description of the puzzle called these things packets. So let's use the same num uh, name, not packets, but parse packet. And because we are also using the, that name here, like all packets, uh, it, which would be a vector of uh, packets things. And we can have the packets be this value type, but you know, just to um, yes, have an idea that the packet is like each of these things, which are always a list of uh, numbers or nested stuff. So, okay, and we have a to-do here to remove the third JSON dependency. So, I think there are a couple of approaches that we could use to parsing, uh, like a recursive descendant parser or something like that. Um, but I think I want to try and see if we could just get away with a simple for loop of iterating each of the characters in the string and making decisions as we go, uh, you know, depending on which character we see. So, um, let's do something like, um, well, for, let's say, character in uh, string chars, we could use chars instead of bytes for this, I guess. Although, I mean, the input is just uh, ASCII, so I guess we could also use uh, bytes here. Uh, and what are we going to do? I guess we are gonna... Let's try to match this character. And... Well, we're gonna make, we're gonna make decisions depending on what we see. So, let's first do the easiest one, which would, would be a number. If we see a number like a, 
yeah, if the character is a number from, I guess, 0 to 9, uh, 9 should be inclusive, um, then what are we going to do? Well, we have to parse this number. So we can do like character minus, um, minus 0, minus the byte uh, 0. So you have like the value from 0 to 9, that's, yeah, that, that should work. Um, but from the input, we can have values that are multiple, well, not in this input, but in the real one, we have uh, values that are over 9, like we have some 10s. I think that there's no 11, like nothing above 10, but uh, that means that we have to handle two-digit numbers somehow. Um, so. How would we, we do that? We have to... Here we are looping over characters. Um, but... Um, I think we can... Like we, we, we would need to pick on the, on the next one and see uh, either to consume it or not, depending on if it's also a number or not. Um, so I guess one thing that we could do is to extract this uh, into a variable. And well, let's call this thing chars. I guess, I mean, we could use chars for this. Uh, shouldn't be uh, a problem. And we don't have to use this syntax for bytes. And it should be better, I guess. So um, we have this chars. Oh, but bytes allow allow us to to do this uh, minus trick. So actually, let's keep let's keep going by, with bytes. Uh, I keep going one way or the other, changing my mind on this. But instead of doing a for loop, we can use a while loop. So while there is some character uh, like this, would be the the, sh the sugared version. Let's return something here to. Uh, not have this thing be complaining. Let's just return, I don't know, uh, let's say to do. Yes, that makes it stop complaining. Okay, so this would be like the desugared version of the for loop, but here we can also have um, access to the char's iterator. So, um, first of all, what should we do with this number? Um, so let's say, let n be this. And let's actually cast this thing as some numeric value. Let's say as, I don't know, u32 could be fine. And then we would have to do, uh, let's say, another while, like another loop here, consuming the next characters that are numeric. So um, we could say while chars peak. Oh, we have this uh, peakable thingy. Um, okay, I guess we can say have it as peakable. And then let's do uh, while let's, I don't know, some other number, um, or actually it would be another character next, uh, next character be. Um, <clears throat> Well, we have to pick, right? So we can do Charles pick. And if there is some other character, and I guess we can also do the, um, the pattern matching here, if I'm not mistaken. So we can use this syntax of, well, basically asking for the same thing here. If the character is of this shape,
then um, we're going to advance this iterator. And we are going to do uh, n, it's going to be n times 10, because this is on, in base 10, plus this next character minus the byte 0, which would be, I guess we will need to convert this. Well, let's see if we need to convert it to um, u32. What are you complaining about? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Uh, we need to do some conversion here. So let's do this as u32. And now there's a bunch of other errors. So <laughs> let's try to look at this. Oh, there's multi multiple mutable boroughs. That's awesome. Um, yeah, this is not exhaustive. Exhaustive. That's fine. Let we can cover this with um, a wildcard card pattern, and let's say uh, reachable. Uh, unexpected character. This and we can do this, I guess. Then, what are the other problems? Well, we cannot assign twice to an immutable variable, of course, it has to be mutable. And what else? Um, yeah, of course, this character iterator has to be mutable also. That's fine. I guess this next is complaining. Um, this is a mutable borrow because we are um, taking a reference to this because we are peaking. But I guess we could um, dereference this. Oh no, we cannot do it like this. But can we do it here? I guess. Uh, Now can we do it here? And now I'm just trying stuff out. Okay, yeah, that is fine. Um, so it doesn't complain about this, but <laughs> we we have to do something up, uh, with these numbers. So I think that also in like peakable. Let's let me see something. We have this peakable thing. Um, that I think has a couple of methods. Um, I think there is something like consume the next one, like to combine this peak and next. Uh, I think there's something like next if, yes, if, and what does this return? Um, sorry, I had to scroll a little bit here. This returns an option of that item. Yes, okay. If it matches this condition. So I guess we can use something like that. So next if, and we can ask um, this should take, I think, a character. And we can ask if this character matches um, this pattern here, um, this thing. And we can just extract this as next character. Here, it doesn't expect a reference, so that's nice, and we don't need to do next here. Okay, um, yeah, that's good. So, um, let's actually see if this is making any sense at all. We are gonna print here 
no, not here, but here, uh, println first uh, number n. And let's run actually this thing. Well, it failed. Um, unexpected character, of course, um, the opening bracket. So let's also do something like, well, if we have an opening brackets or a closing brackets, uh, then typing is difficult, or a comma, I guess. We're gonna do um, nothing. Yes. Uh, so let's go now. Okay, so it passed one, one, three, one, one. So that is, those are these numbers. That seems uh, very good. If we put here, for instance, a, I don't know, one, two, three, what does it do? Yes, it correctly passes this number uh, 123. That's very good. So we are parsing numbers, but we need to put these numbers into somewhere. And actually, we, we will have to think of these cases as uh, different things, right? So what should we do? Well, when we see an opening bracket, that means that we are starting a new list. So we have to like here create a container for a new container and, and, and think about the nesting. So, can we do something like also have a let's uh, mutable? Because this nesting can be arbitrarily, arbitrarily uh, deep. So, I guess we could have a list stack. So, we are going to use a stack, and when we see an opening bracket, we are going to push a new vector to that stack. And when we see a close end bracket, we are going to uh, pop from that stack. So, what, how that would look, I guess, um, we could do something like, um, let's think, well, um, this stack push here, we are going to push a new vector. Uh, we're going to think about this later, but basically here, if we parse the number, it means that you know we should always be inside of a, of a of a list. So we're going to get the last list from this stack. Um, so we can say, well, um, let's list be um, list stack last or else uh, well we can we can panic here <laughs> number does not appear inside the list or we can say number must appear inside the list and well if we do have a list it's just gonna push into that thing. Actually, this should be a list of, of these values, I guess. So we're going to push a value of type number of this n. And this is complaining because, well, I guess we can have to declare the, the variable, the type, type of this. We can say this will be a vector of vector of uh, value. And let's unwrap. Oh, okay. Here I should have said if there is some list as the last one, uh, that's it. Okay, so I guess this was happy to do. Oh no, we have to convert this thing. Let's actually use U32 for this. Yes, and JSON to value. This is a function that we will no longer need. Okay, and what are you complaining about? 
borrow list as mutable assets behind. Uh, okay, we have to take this as mutable. So can we have a mutable reference here or refute? So what would list be here? Uh, I always get this confused. Mm, can we... Is there a last mute? Yes, there is a last mute. <laughs> okay, good. So with these... Um, well, let's think about when we have to pop from the stack. Here, we know that a list has been, uh, has ended. So what are we going to do in this case? Um, well, we're gonna pop from this. And we're gonna say, let's last list. this or else uh, they're gonna panic if there is no last list because it means that if there was an unmatched um, closing closing bracket right but if we do have a last list well um, this actually has to be this can either can either be the last list of like uh, of all like closing you know the, the whole packet or it can be a closing bracket inside of a nested list so i think we will have to um distinguish between these two cases so um mm -hmm. we can say let's some um, uh, parent list be the list stack actually less mutable if there is some parent list so there is uh, some more list in this list stack after we have popped this one that means that this list should be um, contained within this parent list so we can do parent list push the value uh, of list with this uh, with this list of values, okay. But else, um, there there's no more like this. This then is the last list of the of the bunch, and I guess we can just return the this well, I guess we can also extract this into a variable let's call it value of course we're gonna push the value here or either other otherwise we are just going to return this value and this is like the exit condition and I guess here it would be nice to check if the if there are any more um, any more values in, in to to advance, so we could say if pick is sum, so there are there's more values to to iterate over. Then that's an error. You know, we have closed the last list, uh, but there were more values. So we can say uh, we can panic here and say um, unexpected. character do we need to do this though mm -hmm. yes I think we should unexpected character and I guess here we can say uh, if uh, let some character be 
this thing. Okay. And what are you complaining about? Of course, this is a, a reference. We can dereference it here. Fine. And if we reach this, uh, what should we do? This should also be unreachable, I guess. Or we can panic. I guess since we are parsing, this is not really unreachable. I think we should say, okay, this is something unexpected and, and panic. And here also, uh, this would mean that we have, there are no more uh, characters to iterate over, but we haven't closed the last list. So, uh, unclosed uh, packets. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know if this makes sense, but let's, let's see. I guess we could just try to run this and see what happens. Well, it uh, it panicked. Unexpected character. Uh, An end of line, it seems. Hmm. An end of line. What the hell are we parsing? Let's maybe print what we're parsing. <laughs> Print a len, uh, yes. Parsing, and let's just put this string in here. Hmm. Unexpected character. It's actually not. Uh, this is which line is this? this one so there's more stuff after we have closed interesting let's let's print it not as character but you know the the number of that character that is 10 and what is 10 so decimal yes 10 is the line feed or new line. So why the hell is a new line here? I don't really understand. Um, can we maybe let's print s bytes uh, collect and collect this thing as a vec as a vector of uh, stuff and print it in debug mode um, there is no character 10 in here oh I guess we did get to parse everything but the last one was um, Let's do characters. No, not man ASCII. Oh, the last one includes a new line. Huh. What the hell? A new line and then this? Eight, nine. Close. Uh, Okay, so it's actually getting this new line. Um, fine, I guess. We can probably do... Um, we can probably trim this uh, string, I think. So let's do that first. If we do uh, let s be s trim. Okay, <laughs> yes, now we don't have to uh, think about those new lines. And look at that. We got, uh, we actually got the results and I think these are the correct results for the sample input. 
<laughs> so we are parsing this correctly. Uh, this trim though, maybe we don't have to care about uh, you know anything that follows this. So I guess we can consume any white space or not care about white space at all. Um, because yeah, it would be nice to have like a consume white space thingy. I think a, for characters you can ask if it is. Uh, white space, yes, it's ASCII white space, so mm. yeah, you know what, let's not uh, care about anything that comes after the last uh, bracket, so this is not really a production ready parser or anything, we don't need to do trimming, and if we do this, then we get the same results. We don't need to be printing here. And yeah, I think we can try out, well, we can also remove this import because we are not using it anymore. And we can actually try the, well, let's uh, undo these changes here and try out the uh, full input which give us these answers, which I have no idea if they are the correct ones, but it's not exploding. So the first part, my answer was 5808, that is good. And the second answer was 22713. Yes, indeed. So good. Uh, we are getting the same, <laughs> the same result as before, as when using the third uh, JSON parser, but now our parser is just this loop instead of a full-fledged JSON parser. And you know, it's not the prettiest of loops, and of course the previous code, if we compare it to before... Oh, <laughs> load this space. Uh, look at that, I had to end this stream. Uh, well, we can, we can empty the trash for now, but <laughs> I had to check that. Um, let's see the difference here. Well, yes, we renamed this function, that's fine. And, well, it's a bit longer than what we were doing before, but it's just very ad hoc code just for parsing this. And I think I sort of like it, like the charm of a simple loop replacing a whole external library. Let's see if there's something here that we can um, improve. So, <clears throat> uh, this is good, I guess. Yes, we're passing numbers here. We could probably extract this uh, into at uh, least this part into a function, but meh, I don't care. Um, we are doing this thing of pushing into the list in two different Places? Well, no, it's not really different. When we pass a number, we have to put it in the current list. But when we end parsing a list, we pop it and then we push it into the parent list or return it because it's the topmost. Um, list, let's say here, uh, list is top most list um, yes top most ah oh, yes that, that's fine All right yeah I think I I quite like this and printing here as a character is a nice for debugging. Unclosed packet uh, or unclosed list, uh, we could also say. Yes. All right. I think I, yeah, I quite like this thing. 
uh, we were also using this function to parse the these uh, divider packets, which is I think is pretty like goofy but nice. And yeah, oh, and we can actually remove the third dependency. So we can do cargo remove a third uh, JSON. Uh, well, that was fast. And look at that, no more dependencies. And no more JSON lock dependencies. And that's very good. So yeah, let's commit this. Um, replace uh, JSON, no, third uh, JSON dependency for day 13 with a bespoke parser. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I think that's it for what everything else that I, I wanted to do for for this uh, puzzle and I want to continue with the uh, next puzzle now but I think that's it for this video so if you have been thanks for watching and see you next time and I have to clean some uh, this reminds me of the other puzzle of uh, no more space left on device so yeah let's ignore this for now but see you later bye bye